you can totally come to China and leave without having any Chinese friends. Foreign students and Chinese students are actually not allowed to live in the same dorm. What many people don't know is that students are not allowed to work in China. I did know people who missed so many classes that they got their visas cancelled and they had to leave China. Yo guys, what is up? I hope you're all doing great. In today's video, I'm gonna tell you everything that nobody has told you about attending China's elite university and in general, everything you have to know if you're considering studying in China. I myself have studied at Fudan University in Shanghai. We are entering the Fudan campus right now. And Ifa Paris also in Shanghai. And if you're interested to hear more about my experience, you can check out my book that happens to casually be lying right here. I lived in Shanghai. It's a book about my experience studying and living in Shanghai. You can totally go to China and leave without having any Chinese friends if you don't make any effort to get to know Chinese people. The thing about China is that going to university in China, I would say is quite unique or at least it's unique to other places that I went to school in. I went to school in Denmark, France, uh, Thailand and in China. And I would say out of all these places, China is the place where you really have to make the most effort to get to know local students. The thing about international students, foreign students, exchange students, doesn't really matter, uh, and Chinese students is that they tend to live very separate lives in China. And I think that's something really important to know if you're considering China as your potential destination for study abroad. With that being said, I'm totally not saying that it's impossible to meet Chinese friends. It is very much possible and Chinese people are actually in general very curious of foreigners and very friendly and they actually really do want to make friends with foreigners. This issue I would say is quite complex and there is no like one single explanation why it happens. There are a lot of different reasons for that. First of all, I think that Chinese students and foreign students often live very different lifestyles in China. Chinese students study a lot. They're often doing like two degrees. I mean, often, not often, but a lot of, I met a lot of people in China who were doing two degrees at the same time, meaning they just had way more classes. They had to study way more. And then there is definitely a lot more pressure on them from their family sides to study, to do well at school, to get like top grades. Also in general, I would say in Chinese society, getting high grades and performing very well at school is something extremely important. I'm not saying that in Western society it's not, but I do feel like in Western society, Western mindset, we do sort of allow students to have way more free time to go out there and sort of just be silly kids and party. Um, yeah, and that's what foreign students do in China as well. There is a lot of well partying and just like uh, being social and going out and enjoying your life and exploring culture, traveling, that kind of things. Another thing is that at Chinese universities, there are separate dorms for Chinese students and foreign students. So foreigners and Chinese people don't really live together and that's why, well, it's a little harder to meet each other. It's not at Fudan, we didn't live far away from each other. We, we like live right next to each other. But you know, it makes a difference. Actually, when it comes to like nightlife and partying, us foreign students at Fudan, we could, you know, leave the campus and go come back at any time of the day that we wanted or any time of the night, uh, I should say. But actually, Chinese students who lived at the Chinese dorms, they're not allowed to leave or they were allowed to leave, but they were not allowed to come back at night. So I think that also created this like division between like what foreign students would do in the evenings at night and what Chinese students would do because well, they're simply like, we're not allowed to do same things, right? And then finally, there is the language. I would say that big majority of students at good universities will be pretty fluent in English. I mean, Chinese students. So it's not even the issue of not knowing English. Most of them speak English perfectly fine. But the problem is that they're often quite shy when it comes to interaction with foreigners. I think the issue here is also the way a lot of Chinese people are taught English, they really focus on reading, on grammar, writing, and not so much on speaking. Before choosing a university in China, you should be very clear on what you want, what kind of experience you want, and what you expect to get out of your experience. Don't underestimate the size and diversity of China. I think that's the most common mistakes people do when talking about China, when going to China. People really underestimate the size 
think about China almost as you would kind of ish think of Europe. I know it's not exactly the same, but what I mean is that China is like Europe in a way that it's equally big and then the different parts of China can be almost treated as different countries. The north of China is very different from the south. Even the big cities are quite different. You know, living in Beijing is very different than Shanghai. And that's why I think when you go to China, you should really understand what kind of experience you expect. If you really want to get into the Chinese culture and you want to learn Chinese, then maybe you shouldn't go to Beijing and Shanghai. But then on the other hand, if you also want to hang out with other foreigners and meet people from all around the world, maybe Shanghai and Beijing is the right place for you, right? There's honestly no right and wrong. So don't necessarily think that if you want to have the authentic Chinese experience, you need to go to like a smaller city because you can also definitely experience Chinese culture and learn Chinese when you're in Shanghai. So just don't let yourself be too like confused by what other people say because I've experienced that a lot that whenever I tell people that I lived in Shanghai, people would be like, oh, that's not, you know, real China, that's not real authentic Chinese experience. But you know, that's how it always is with big cities. Like living in Paris is also very different than living anywhere else in France, right? And also hanging out with other foreigners is not necessarily a bad thing or at least that's how I feel. I love the fact that I met people from all around the world in China and yes I did enjoy studying Chinese and learning more about China and its culture but I also love the fact that I met people from all around the world and also learned a lot about other countries and other cultures and also when choosing a university I would definitely recommend you to research the campus I think in general a lot of universities in China have pretty cool like campus life uh, at least that's what we had at Fudan Fudan has like a very large campus in Shanghai it's very green and there is like no cars we would bike around the campus and basically you have everything there that you need like it's almost like living in this like little student village inside of this huge city which I personally think is like the ideal solution because Shanghai not only Shanghai other cities in China as well can be quite overwhelming because there are a lot of people a lot of traffic a lot of things going on especially if you come from abroad and you're new to China you're gonna be quite overwhelmed so I think it's a very nice thing to stay at a campus and you know have this like more calm student life on the campus do a very good research and make sure you understand visa regulation and especially work permit in China I know that a lot of people come to China and they think that it's also a great opportunity to get an internship or get some work experience but actually many people don't know that you're not allowed to work in China when you are on a student visa and there is no exceptions you need a actual work visa to be able Able to work in China that makes sense but well some people don't know that I guess I don't know attendance at Chinese universities is extremely important in China you do have to come to class I mean everywhere you should come to class when you go to school right but it's not necessarily always the reality let's be honest I actually knew people who got their visas cancelled and they had to leave China because they had too much absence absence that's how you call it well they didn't come to class that often at that university if you had more than 20% of absence you would get your visas cancelled and I remember the first time I heard about it I thought they're just like playing around I thought they're just like trying to scare people and make them come to class uh, but no they're not playing around it was actually true I did know quite a few people who had to leave because of that I mean leave they would do visa runs to Hong Kong but that's another story <laughs> if you want to hear more about that check out my book anyways um, yeah it's quite normal to China to have your teachers text you if you don't come to class if you're like sick or you had a little too much margarita the day before mm, uh, yeah your teacher will text you and demand an explanation I mean demand will ask you but the teacher will ask you what's up mate like why didn't you come to class right China they speak Chinese not English. English is not the official language spoken in China. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that if you don't speak Chinese and you choose to study in English in China, it can be an issue. Let's be honest, it can be an issue. And obviously, if you are doing a degree in English, if you have English classes, your teachers and everyone in class will speak English. But most of the time, English will be their second language. I feel like some people, especially people from native English speaking countries, native English speaking countries, did I say that right? Well, people who speak English as their first language, 
sometimes they tend to not necessarily handle it that well if you know what i mean i personally never had issues with like not understanding someone speaking english to me or whatever but i did have some friends who told me that they had classes where the professor would speak english with a very thick accent which made it hard for them to understand so this is of course a very individual case i don't think that's something that happens super frequently but it can happen whenever you're doing a degree in english in a country where english is not the official language that is just something to keep in mind of course this is not only the case in china this is exactly the same in every single country out there i also heard that a lot of the time when people were doing group works it would often be quite separated meaning like Chinese students would be in groups of themselves and then foreigners would be in groups of themselves and yeah and I think that is quite a natural thing it often happens like that because well foreigners are friends with other foreigners and it just like naturally happens like that unless the teachers don't do something and I think in this case teachers should do something for example when I went to school in Bangkok and whenever we had group work the teachers would always say that groups had to be mixed so often you had to have like let's say two foreigners and three Thai people in a group um, which I actually think was a good thing because that really allowed me to meet a lot of other Thai students don't underestimate how long it takes to learn Chinese Chinese is a difficult language some people are better at learning languages some people are not that good at it but it actually doesn't matter how good you are Chinese is quite a difficult language and it will take you a while so if you're going to China for half a year or one year don't expect to come back and be fluent in Mandarin I mean unless it's all you do you study very hard i don't know i mean after half a year or one year of studying mandarin you're definitely not going to be fluent let me tell you that i mean maybe there are some extraordinary people out there i don't know but everyone i knew was not fluent after one year um so yeah don't underestimate that because i feel like sometimes people have a tendency to not really understand fully how long it actually takes to learn a language however with that being said learning mandarin learning as much chinese as you can when going to china is of course very helpful majority of people in china still don't speak english that well uh it is changing in the big cities and also depends where you go in china but if you go out there to a supermarket if you take a taxi whatever you want to buy you will have to know some chinese so knowing numbers uh, knowing how to ask for things like at the shop or talking to taxi drivers that will help you a whole lot in china so definitely try to learn as much as you can and of course get all these like translating apps and pleco and dictionaries one thing i just thought of that i sort of forgot to say is that i know a lot of people might be watching this video wondering if you should go and study in china if i recommend you to do that and my answer is definitely yes i had a great time studying in china and i absolutely loved it and as much as of course there are certain things that you should know if you're considering to study there it's still a great place to go to study abroad and i had so much fun i made so many amazing friends i had so many incredible experiences and now i just have so many great memories from studying in china i hope this video was helpful for you and if you're interested to hear more about my experience living in china check out my book i lived in shanghai it's available on amazon both as an ebook and paperback if you have any other questions just let me know in the comments down below and i hopefully see you soon